Hi everyone, welcome to A Beer with Brad episode 36. That's right, the last episode of year three. Tonight I'm going to talk about some photography goals and a few other things going on, but first let's talk about the beer. Tonight I'm having a Kilbasa King from Hot Butcher. Uh, Hot Butcher, it's actually called Hot Butcher for the World is the full name, but everyone just calls it Hot Butcher. Uh, it's a brewery out of Chicago, Illinois. Um, I don't know how long they've been in Omaha. Uh, I just recently became familiar with them, a buddy of mine, Lou. Uh, Lou knows a ton about beer and he turned me on to them and uh, they really, uh, they have some really good beers, a lot of different things. Uh, you know, I'm always attracted to fun names and fun artwork on the can, so the Kielbasa King with the big, uh, well, Kielbasa is a sausage, even though the picture looks like a hot dog there on the front, but this is a Mosaic and Nelson Sauvin Hopped Double IPA. So, um, Mosaic, when I first really got into IPAs and started learning about all the different hops, and there's so many different hops in different IPAs, uh, Mosaic was like my original favorite. Now there's a lot, it's still a good hop, don't get me wrong, but there's so many different ones out there, I couldn't even pick a, a favorite anymore. But, uh, you know, the everything I've had from the uh, Hop Butcher has been really good. Um, and so tonight, uh, the Kielbasa King. So people always ask, you know, uh, want me to tell in these videos where the beer came from. Uh, this one came from the Casual Pint. They actually, when I was up there last week, had four different varieties of IPA from Hot Butcher. Um, and I've also seen them at some of the bottle shops, but I don't think I've seen them, if I've seen them at the grocery store, it's been like a one random uh, IPA here and there, not, uh, you know, the, the quantity that you'd see at more of the specialty bottle shops, but uh, Casual Pint has had a bunch on tap, and then they had, uh, like I said the other day, had four in the can, and then uh, uh, Wall to Wall up there, they, up on Center Street, also had uh, quite a few a while back. I haven't been up there in a little while, so I don't know if they uh, got this round. I would assume they did. I don't know why they wouldn't, but uh, great, great flavor there. Nice, easy drinking IPA. Uh, really smooth. You know, a lot of people uh, that aren't uh, very familiar with IPAs, a lot of times they'll say they're really bitter. A lot of times if you have a really bitter IPA, you're drinking more of a West Coast IPA where this is New England style of IPA. Hazier, a uh, lot more citrusy, orange juice uh, type beer. Uh, a lot of really good flavor in there. So, <clears throat> Once again, this video is uh, a week late, uh, last month with the holidays and family in town and everything going on. I just didn't get to the video right away. Uh, and then this month, um, I actually started, I just looked at the computer because a lot of times I'll type myself notes or email myself notes about what I want to talk about. Um, I actually came up with this on January 11th and then now here it is, February 6th. And uh, I'm finally getting around to record it. Uh, January was, uh, like I said, started out really busy and then uh, towards the end of the month I just started feeling like I had a cold and I, for over two and a half weeks now, I just haven't had the energy and then this time of night uh, I start losing my voice. So if my voice really starts getting raspy and uh, crackly here as we go on, uh, that's when I have a cold. Uh, I film these beer spreads usually later in the evening after I get the kids to bed. They come down here, set everything up in the basement and uh, so it's, you know, right now, uh, quarter to ten almost so uh, my voice is on its last leg but uh, hopefully we'll keep this video a little bit shorter and I uh, uh, go on get it all done uh, but so January I really haven't taken any pictures uh, February has started off the same way I went to uh, one Creighton their annual pink out game you can see these two photos here uh, I always love taking the pink out photos and then uh, this couple days ago, I went to the UNO, had a big home series, uh, uh, Omaha, hockey, Omaha Mavericks hockey, uh, sold out game. So I got a couple of these uh, cool photos here. The thing I love about uh, taking the pink out photos at Creighton, I mean, besides that, it's a great cause. When you have a, an arena where, uh, especially this year, they have new lighting in there and the court is so bright. And then as the fans kind of get further and further away from the court, it gets darker and darker and harder to see those fans, but when they're all wearing the pink or up here on senior day, they'll all wear the white shirts. It, you can really get a good sense of how many people are in the arena because you see all the pink and all the white. It really lights up nice. Uh, Baxter Arena, on the other hand, uh, where UNO plays hockey, they used a lot more uh, 
bright colors inside so instead of like a black ceiling they have a white ceiling instead of I guess they both kind of have dark gray walls um, and then uh, but you know the Baxter does have black seats but I think it's just that the bright lighting in there and the the proximity of the fans to the ice and then also the ice reflecting light back up uh, always a cool place for taking panoramics of the the uh, big the full uh, arena so uh, very cool uh, forgot to get out the lens here so I know I said panoramics, but uh, I actually borrowed my friend Mike. Uh, uh, Mike does a lot of Creighton stuff with me. Uh, you can look his stuff up, Southwest Iowa Sports Images or SWI Sports Images. He has this uh, eight millimeter to 15 millimeter fisheye lens. Uh, so the, the Creighton pictures and UM pictures I just showed you were all taken on the, with this. Um, with my camera, uh, it, the eight millimeter is like a little circle and type there'd be you'd see a black rectangle with a little tiny circle picture in the middle i have to shoot it on the 15 millimeter end but as you can see from the pictures that still gets plenty of the arena in there all in one shot um and then the fish eye, if i was shooting buildings architecture i wouldn't like the fish eye look but inside the arena which is naturally kind of round i really like what the fish eye does to it and it makes it have that kind of panoramic look so uh really cool uh, Mike's super good for a uh, good guy. Let's borrow this all the time. So I, I enjoy using this. Canon uh, for my camera did come out with a Canon came out with a new 10 millimeter uh, wide angle lens. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, trying that one out. I really think uh, that extra from going from 15 down to 10 should be a pretty wide uh, lens for taking the, the, the sports stuff, the full arena, stadium, uh, panoramic type photos. The uh, problem right now is they're brand new and they're on all on back. Everyone has them on back order. Rockbrook uh, doesn't even have it on their website yet. And then looked at B&H and they said, put your name on the list and we'll, we'll let you know when you get some in. So that's where I'm at with that lens. So tonight I wanted to talk about my goals for uh, 2024. It seems a little late, but like I said, when I started making my notes for this episode, it was January 11th. It was the morning of January 11th. I was in the shower, and you would not believe how many actual beer with bread shows ideas have come from why I'm taking a shower. I don't know. It seems like where I come up with some of my best ideas, maybe because I'm not distracted by anything. So... Um, I wanted to come up with uh, what I was going to do for my goals this year. And I, I know I've in the past I've always had different goals and I never fall through. I never even go back to see what what they are, what the goals were and if I followed them. So if you're not doing that, it's kind of pointless. Um, this time I'm actually going to write them down and then I will make another video. Maybe it'll be part of my year in review or a different beer with bread later on down the road and I'll actually go back to these goals and see if I followed them and maybe one of these days I should look back and see if I set any goals last year's beer with bread but uh, my first goal is I'm gonna take a picture when I see it uh, I've been really bad in the past about I'll see something I'm like that's awesome but right now I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that and I don't stop what I'm doing and, and take the picture and I've I've passed on pictures that I've never been able to replicate again. You know, just where that lighting is perfect or the clouds are just perfect. I need to do a better job at just stopping, uh, you know, taking a few minutes and, and taking the picture. And, you know, and that's not to say I'm going to, like, stop on the way to school and tell the kids, sorry, you're going to be late today and take a little pictures. And it, it's not usually in those situations. A lot of times it's the worst, one of the worst that is when I'm on a photography trip. And it's like, all right, I'm leaving Omaha at this time and I'm going to be in... Cheyenne, Wyoming at this time, and if I'm driving down Interstate 80 and I see the coolest thing, I don't pull over and take it because I've already decided that I'm going to Cheyenne and I'm not stopping anywhere on the way. So uh, the first goal, I, uh, I'm going to stop. I'm going to make more time. Maybe I should make more time in my trip out there or plan better or do things a little different, but I'm going to not pass up great photos just because I want to be somewhere when I thought I should be somewhere. My second goal, especially on the landscape photography trips, is I'm going to slow down. I know in the past I've told myself to slow down, but just slow down and think and get one great photo instead of trying to run around like crazy and get all kinds of different photos and, you know, thinking that I'm going to miss something. There's been a lot of times where 
I get back home and I look at the images on the computer and I'm always thinking, if I just moved a little bit to the left or just a little bit to the right, um, it would have been such a, a much better photo. And it's not like I can just go back out to Utah or somewhere and, and get the exact same photo and fix it. It's one of those things you just have to kind of live with. And instead of living with it, I just want to do a better job on the front end, taking the photos, making sure I get everything I want, making sure my focus is right. Last year, actually I can think of last year and then even the last time I was in Utah, I brought Utah up. There was a photo I just love and the picture, the wrong subject or the wrong item in the picture is not in focus. You know, the the last, uh, the Colorado from this last fall, the trees in the foreground were out of focus, but all the trees in the background were completely in focus. And then uh, the one I'm thinking about in Utah, there was some beautiful maples and then like a dead log behind them that was a really nice background. And that bark on that, on that log was just completely tack sharp, but the maple leaves in the foreground were all out of focus. So. I just need to slow down, making sure I'm doing the, what I want to do. And the, the crazy thing is, is like with the focus issues, is I don't shoot on, I shoot autofocus, but I don't have the live view. I actually move my focus point around and put it on what I want. So, you know, when I make mistakes like that, that's just totally me not, uh, not focusing or not paying attention. So I'm going to uh, do a better job at slowing down. My third and final goal is in 2024, I gotta stop paying attention to the internet. I find myself stressing out, maybe not stressing, but getting angry over dumb things on the internet that are completely not in my control. I just need to tune it out and focus on my photography and focus on what, what I do and what I like to do. And I know people out there like what I do, so I need to stop worrying about the other things. Um, some of the biggest examples lately, uh, well, there's two, um, one is there's people that used to use me to take their pictures and then all of a sudden didn't and whoever they've replaced me with or whatever, they're, they're not, they're not taking good photos and I'm not trying to single out any company or throw anyone under the bus, but you know, I go through a lot of work to make sure my photos are processed right, the light balance, the white balance is right, um, the photo is straight, the any photo, whoever takes it, if the horizon is completely crooked, it annoys me to no end. And so when I see people that used to use me that don't for whatever reason, and I don't ever ask people, hey, how come you stop using me and you use this photographer that doesn't know what they're doing? I, I, I'm trying not to sound mean, but it's just... The, the little easy things, the basic, the entry level photography things like a crooked horizon, things like that just they drive me nuts. And I just need to not pay attention to it. I need to focus on my own stuff. Um, there was another really good example I had when I was working on this and I can't figure out, what, remember what it is now, but it's just, I just need to focus on my own. I can control what I can control. I can control my pictures. Uh, I just do what I need to do to make my photos the best I can and just not worry about anyone else. So, uh, that said, uh, I need to get out more because there's been, I've missed a lot of uh, great photo opportunities, but when you're not feeling well, it's kind of hard to motivate yourself to get out in the cold and the, the elements. But, uh, you know, here in Omaha, we had, uh, almost a blizzard, uh, followed by really cold, cold weather. And then, when it started warming up, we've had a ton of fog and I really like photographing in the fog and I have not, my like I said, I went to, I photographed one Creighton game and I photographed one UNO game and that's pretty much all the pictures I've taken this month. So it's been a, a struggle here the first two months, but uh, I'm really looking forward to the rest of the year. I'm hoping for some great things this year. I uh, got the crane uh, photography, the blind, the photography blind for the cranes all booked be heading out there later in March and uh, I just think I think it's gonna be a great year photography wise so uh, got to come up with a, a few more ideas for beer with Brad here too um, I have one more idea on the, the to-do list and then I'm kind of out of ideas but I've also thought too that starting year four that maybe we'll do some different things uh, I've had a ton of people ask to actually be on beer with Brad so I don't know if that means like, you know, do I put another chair here and then we 
and a, have a guest or you know go film something at a brewery got got some ideas so uh you know maybe change things up a little bit for for year four but well thanks for tuning in hopefully i didn't ramble a little too much there but uh kind of all over the map towards the end but i really appreciate everyone tuning in uh, i get a lot of comments feedback on these videos so i appreciate that i appreciate everyone that watches and uh, i thank everyone for three years of support now and next month we're on to year four so thank you very much and i'll see you again next time